Well, then in 1991, there was the Heavy D and Puff Daddy celebrity basketball game. City College tragedy. Right. You were doing security that night. Yes, I that was. That day, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So from what I understand, and I've talked to a few people about this and, and read articles about it, that the event itself was oversold. There was all these kids who bought $20 tickets, and some of them were having trouble getting in, even the ones who had tickets. Okay. And then at one point, Mike Tyson shows up. LL Cool J shows up. And everyone starts going crazy and is trying to get into the building. All right. What happened was that Puff first hired 18 of my guys to do the job for the outside. That's what we did, the outside of clubs. You know, people, we did it for Tim Dognum, all the uptown parties and everything. My crew was thorough. I had powerful, uh, slick, Noah, TJ, Bunny, just just dudes that was known in the city. Then I hired some correction officers and a few cops also that you don't have problems with people online. Uh, this particular day, uh, Puff calls me the day be- the day before we supposed to do the party. Say, yo, Gene, I don't need y'all to do the security outside. I got the FOIs to do it. All right. So I said, man, I just told 18 guys. He said, I just need eight. I just need eight. I said, eight. And Slick, you know, who was at this time I had uh, left the same gang and went over to uh, Slick and the family. And I started Slick and the family with my man because uh, me and D. Fergnum, we was cool and everything, but they was not allowing me to get the money that uh, I was thinking of all the things the picnics, the parties and everything. So they didn't allow me to, they just only wanted to pay me to do the security. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want to, you know, him and Mike didn't want to break me into the uh, the fold and me put up a quarter of the money so we could do it together so we could, you know, break down the things that I was thinking of. So I started the own group with uh, Slick and the family. So I, Slick said, don't worry about it, Gene. We just go there with the eight guys and we just take the money and we just come back to the game room and just have fun. I said, yeah, all right, cool. So we shows up and I... I see that the that the people was already crowded out there and it was crazy. So I finagled my way in there, me and uh Slicknum. I said, yo, I told Puff right then and there. I say, Puff, if they don't do a boxing one outside and get these kids off the door, somebody gonna die tonight. He said, Gene, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You just handle the stars once they come inside. So I said, Yeah, all right then. So um I, I did a walk around. So I walked around the, the the top of the floor, went down the steps and went in the gym and then came across the gym. And I seen that you can go up the steps and be right there at the front door. So um, everybody was coming in. You seen Dougie Fresh, Red Alert. They was on the mic. Everybody started, people started coming in and everything. It was cool. And then when LL Cool J and Mike Tyson showed up, that shit must have went pandemonium. They must have broke through the first doors where the uh, FOIs was and came to the door where we was inside at. And it was a glass door that they were, they were crowded at in the glass door and people were steady pushing the people through the door. Whereas that they pushed the people so hard that the glass broke and people fell through the glass doors at the top of the stairs. And when people fell through the door of the top of the store, we grabbed this girl, you know, and she was pregnant. We later found out that was Father MC's baby's mother. And she died that day with her, with her baby inside her. And you could see that she was pregnant. You know what I'm saying? She had to be like six or seven months pregnant. So we grabbed her and helped, helped her up. And then she ended up going downstairs when we had got her out the way. So they got trapped down the stairs after they broke through the first glass. They got trapped downstairs through the um, the second door because Jessica had got scared. That was Puffy Puffy partner at the time, Jessica Rosenberg. She got scared, ran downstairs with the uh, money box and shut the door behind her. And all those people got shut down in there and got trapped. Right. Nine people died that day. 29 others were injured. And I guess uh, Nice and Smooth's bodyguard were, were, was one of the people that got killed? My man, let me tell you something. I 
That dude was about 6'4". He had a white T-shirt on, I think, with khaki pants. I was over there trying to resuscitate him, and I was like, this shit is crazy. So, um, it was it was, it was just it was, it was it was just that crazy. That big dude died there too. So you didn't have to be a certain size. He was about six four, man. Yeah, sad. Uh, a very sad day to see that much death and, and destruction right in front of you. Right. Was that the first time you'd actually seen people dying? Uh, nah. Okay. Not at all. But in that fashion, though. In, in, in that fashion, kind of yeah. In that fashion. Yeah. I've never seen, you know, you see people get shot. You see people, you know, situations like that. But in that fashion, yeah, that's crazy. Well, uh, seven years later, a judge actually placed 50% of the blame on the people's deaths on the City University of New York and 50% on the promoters, which is Heavy D and Puffy and, and Jessica Rosenberg. Uh, but I don't think anyone actually went to prison or anything else like that over that. No, I don't think so. Yeah. And because that incident, Puffy got fired from Uptown. Yes, he did. We put and him on suicide you... watch. Oh, he wanted to kill himself. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, you, you feel partially responsible for nine people dying, including a pregnant woman, which is technically 10 if you think about it. Yeah. I think yeah. that he was on suicide watch because he thought he lost everything. Yeah, that too. 